we negate, our sole contention is collapsing Catalonia. Neither side really wants to see the region become independent. First on Catalonia, the Associated Press reports two weeks ago that 71% of Catalans would prefer negotiating with Spain rather than declaring independence. Second, on Spain, Dykov 16 of Paris University finds that secession can be averted if Spain demonstrates an ability to take the demands and grievances of Catalonia into account through reform. Luckily, Bosby 17 of The Guardian reports that a commission on constitutional reform opened discussions in November on a new settlement between Catalonia and the Spanish government. Lashers of the CFR confirmed over a month ago that the Spanish administration is keen on making fiscal concessions to Catalonia in the short run and constitutional reform in the medium term. Because both parties are working against it, Dykov concludes Catalan secession is in no way inevitable. Unfortunately, granting independence would reverse progress and wreak havoc. Subpoint A, post-independence fragmentation. Gundermann of the University of Montreal reports three weeks ago that only 27% of Catalans strongly support independence, demonstrating a deeply polarized society. Unfortunately, 2017 of the CSCIS finds that due to the significant portion of Catalonia that opposes secession, there would be significant discord if independence were granted. Murado 16 of the University of Pompu Fabra writes that independence without a majority support would inevitably lead to internal violence between separatists and unionists, dooming the state to failure. That's why Gara Brown University concludes two weeks ago that Catalonia would experience complete political turmoil as an infant state. So point B, economic destruction. An independent Catalonia would face an unprecedented poverty crisis for two reasons. First, trade. Pillow 13 of the University of Barcelona explains that the largest market for Catalonian producers is the rest of Spain. Unfortunately, Mora 13 of the University of Edinburgh explains that the mere act of establishing an international border between Catalonia and Spain would make trade extremely inefficient, resulting in an 80% decrease between the two nations and an 8% decrease in GDP. Critically, Stevens 08 of Hofstra University finds a 1% decrease in total output is associated with a 1.8% increase in poverty. Worse yet, Polo finds that the decreased production as well as the lower prices to remain competitive would cause significant cuts in wages, employment, and the number of business businesses. As a result, Bosch 17 of CNBC quantifies that Catalonian unemployment would double. Even if Catalonia remained in the EU, the absence and restructuring of institutions following independence would result in structural unemployment. Thus, Lacal 12 of the IESC Business School finds that it would lose over 350,000 jobs and see a recession lasting at least five years. Nichols 12 of the Urban Institute concludes that unemployment increases the risk of deep poverty by 11%. Second, pensions. Spain currently has one of the best pension systems worldwide, providing monthly payments to low-income individuals during employment and all retired citizens. Unfortunately, Polo explains that as exports fall and businesses shut down, the government would see a significant decrease in tax revenue, forcing them to cut spending. Lacal confirms that after independence, Catalonia would be forced to sever pensions due to paralyzing debt obligations. Thus, Sebedro 17 of the University of Granada finds an independent Catalonia's pension system would not recover until at least 2088. Guyan 11 of the University of Oviedo finds that pensions are the primary mechanism for reducing poverty in Spain, having reduced the rate by nearly 75%. Rubini 14 of NYU writes that economic failure is often followed by strong backlash, allowing economic nationalism and political instability to take root, which is why Collier 04 of Oxford University quantifies that a percentage point decrease in economic growth increases the probability of conflict by one percentage point. The cumulative impact is state failure. Brunette 17 of the University of Barcelona concludes that Catalonia could not exist as an independent state because it would experience a drastic economic collapse and political instability. Indeed, Sir 9 of Duke University empirically verifies that secessionist states have a 90% probability of experiencing violent conflict, most commonly involving a civil war that kills hundreds of thousands. Moreover, Star 08 of USC quantifies that state failure increased increases the probability of civil war by 45% and the odds of international conflict by 115%. Preserve peace and negate. Mm -hmm. um, with like the first one, the one from earlier in the case about how um, they opened like a forum for discussion in November. Yeah. And then the second one is like 350,000 jobs. Yeah, I'm going to grab the count, I think. I'll get the first one then. just the first sentence.
You ready?
So a lot of the problems that AFT reads are like things that Catalonia wants and then things that Spain doesn't want. For example, refugees. A part of negotiations could be allowing Catalonia. Could be. To are they doing that right now? Uh, no, it's constitutional stuff right now. You call okay. it the card. Yeah. All right. Cool. So. But that's what how. Other, what that's how. So so these okay. negotiations are only solving the constitutional crisis. What's the impact? There's of also that? there's also fiscal concessions. What is the impact of that? Stopping Catalonia from seceding. Okay, sure. When, can I, get, can I sure. get a question? Yeah. Okay, so under Biting the Bullet, you talk about how um, granting Catalonia independence stops nationalists from voting. What's stopping them from just pivoting to another crisis or another issue? It's not what like other crisis is politics. there? What other crisis is there? What other crisis is yeah. there in Spain? Yeah. Okay, well, there's lots of other independence movements, like the Basque independence movement, for example. Um, there's, wait, wait, there's wait, always, how, 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 popular finish, is the, how popular is the Basque it's independence not, that's movement? That's not important. Are people voting because it, that's of the Basque independence What's important is there's movement. always causes for nationalists to get behind. So, there's, in, no. there's immigration, so mis, there's I refugees. You're, I think you're misunderstanding the argument. Okay, our you're argument. saying nationalists aren't going to vote anymore in our world. No, I need an explanation for that. Yeah, I'll explain it. That's not our argument. Our okay. argument is that people, even <laughs> liberals in Spain, will be mm -hmm. the idea of American liberals. In Spain, yeah. vote for nationalists and for Spanish nationalists and conservatives because those are the only people running on anti independence platforms, and most people don't support How independence. How many people are voting for them just because of that? How big of an The Economist evidence be? says that most people, and the only reason why they have seats in, in parliament right now is because of the crisis and because they're leveraging so it. So, most to gain people support. who vote for nationalist candidates are doing it for that reason, right? Is that, yeah, is because of the anti independence platform, yes. Okay, I want to see that card afterwards, but, does, sure. but negotiations That's are going to solve this. Why? Like that's why that's because they're solving for the crisis. There's no longer a crisis, and Catalonia is not going to be pushing for independence anymore when they get their fiscal. Yeah, I mean, concessions obviously we're going to contest your case, concessions. but you can have a question. I uh, know I just got one. It's yours. Okay, sure. All right. On your second contention, you say that there's going to be a doubling in unemployment. What does that piece of evidence come from? Um, you I say it's Bosch, right? But Bosch doesn't Bosch. do the economic analysis okay. on itself, right? Who it's, does that? Uh, it sounds like you know the answer to that question. Yeah, it's the <laughs> Spanish government, right? Okay. So. Just You're, take Le Cal that says they're going to lose 350,000 jobs. Okay, so instead of 1.25 million, we're getting 350,000. I mean, that's, 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 that's wanna, in the I case that they that um, are in the EU. If they're not in the EU, we're, we are going to see a larger loss, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, can I see that card I asked for? We're going to stop on the card. Which card? The one that says um, the majority of people who voted for national oh, yeah, candidates yeah. only did so. Yeah. I can just give you all the cards. Just the one would be good. <laughs> yeah, no, we have more than one that says that. Okay. They're in order. I'll, like, I'll just give you all the cards and then. Alright.
start on Briss. First of all, Briss says that Spain has granted asylum for over 17,000 refugees. That contradicts their entire narrative. If nationalism and political resistance in Spain was preventing Spain from accepting refugees, then Spain wouldn't be granting asylum to these refugees in the first place. Second, Castro of the Moroccan World News reports that the reason refugees aren't in Spain is because they physically can't get there. That doesn't change in the affirmative world. Spain has created a program with Morocco to alleviate the flow of refugees across the Mediterranean, meaning that the same number of refugees will reach the Iberian Peninsula in either world. Third, their argument's empirically false. As of, as of November, the UN explains that Spain has seen a 90% increase in refugee arrivals. Indeed, last year, 21,000 refugees were expected. Then on their uh, deportation evidence, it's really miscut. Call for it. It's talking about illegal refugees, and it's talking about EU members. Uh, it's an EU law that they have to follow. If Catalonia joins the EU, they still have to follow that law. They still be deporting the same amount of people. Then on Catalonian intent, a couple of turns. First of all, nationalism is going to increase the and destroy refugee policies of both countries in two ways. First, fueling extremism. The AF advocates for lump sum acceptance of refugees on the part of an independent Catalonia. However, Dinas of Oxford finds that when a country changes policies of gradual refugee inflow to sudden inflows, it fuels anti-immigrant policy and blowback. Indeed, Hajal of UC San Diego continues that when large waves of immigration lead to radicalized anger, it degrades views on immigration, leading to increasingly conservative policymaking and restrictive border, border reforms. Noel of the University of Iowa quantifies that the public is 43% less likely to support migrant aid policies after a tide of nationalism and xenophobia. Second, emboldening the right wing. Father of the nation explains that polarization surrounding the issue of secession has become a power ladder. Politicians aiming to push radical agendas are running campaigns based on secession to get an office. If independence is granted, these new parties will be legitimized, leading to a, brand, a, a new brand of Catalan right-wing nationalism sweeping the government. Unfortunately, the Polish Ministry of Affairs 2015 asserts that political nationalism fueled by anti-refugee sentiment makes countries more likely to pass uh, policies that hurt humanitarian aid efforts in the long run. Then on the Spain side, turn it again. Studbacher of the University of Cambridge explains that Catalonia constitutes a left-leaning bloc in Parliament, meaning that after independence, the political tides in Spain are likely to shift away from accepting refugees. So even if Catalonia does accept refugees, the 21,000 refugees that Spain is accepting annually aren't going to continue to happen. Then on austerity measures. First of all, they're going away right now. Wider Reuters reports that Spain has veered away from using austerity measures because A, their economy is improving right now, so they don't need to cut down on spending, and B, the major political parties are trying to compromise in order to get widespread support for the bill. Prefer this evidence over theirs. There is a reason why they don't read a date for their evidence. It's from 2012 in the middle of the EU debt crisis. But second, we can control the internal link to austerity measures in three ways. First, econ. Ben of the London School of Economics writes that austerity is implemented when a government faces economic decline and the needs to cut back spending in order to restore its balance, a balance sheet and economic confidence. If we win sub point B, we win it. Second is refugees. Cross apply the Hijal evidence from my turn to their contention one. When a country sees an influx of refugees, suddenly support for conservative policies increases. Then third is nationalism. Cross apply my G nationalism DA above. Fabric concludes that independence will give right wingers the power to end the Catalan welfare safety net. Moreover, cross apply student Bakker from the DA above. If Catalonia leaves, so will all liberals in Spain's parliament, meaning more conservative policies get passed, prefer these warrants for uh, two reasons. One is severity. If nationalists are angered now, imagine what it'll be like when Spain actually grants Catalonia independence. And second is probability. Austerity is going away now. The school is a risk of solving for radical measures because of moderating effect of liberals. There's a, only a risk of offense happening in their world. Then on sub B, their political evidence was literally written by Pujamaj. Of course, he's going to say people support his own movement. Our, mo our evidence says that only 27% uh, majorly supported. That's really important. You, turn, you use that as a turn because when you grant independence, you see internal fracturing and conflict, meaning that either A, the state collapses, or B, uh, it gets so close to collapse, they go back to Spain, not uniquely all their offense. Then there's CFR evidence about growing support. It's really old. It's in the past tense, describing what happened in October, not what's going to happen. That's key because either A, their link is not unique, or B, it's improbable because it should have already happened. Then realize that Catalonia is not going to pursue session for two reasons. First is Spanish power. RT reports in 2017 that Spain will use all, all legal means to prevent secession, which is why Press of Nara reports last week that the leaders of the independence movement are dropping their push for secession and are now pushing for negotiations to uh, weigh this in two ways. One, literally Spain is so powerful that Catalonia cannot physically uh, secede and B, that changes the Catalonian decision-making cal uh, calculus so they won't. And the second is a lack of support. The Economist finds the Catalonian president does not have enough support to force independence, which is crucial as Gonzalez finds that the support is a prereq to the protracted deal secessions would require. At the end of the day, reform solves. 71% of Catalonians would prefer to see negotiations. There's a risk of that happening in our world. When you vote for them, you guarantee internal fracturing and violence. Yeah, I think I read a couple of cards for that. You want Nara? Sure. Okay. Anything else while I'm looking, or is that good? Oh yeah, uh, the EU law. Okay, that's like in the card, I think. But I'll grab it. Oh, I'll see. No, that's like. Oh yeah, yeah. Good. Show me. Like your ninety percent card on deportation. Yeah, yeah. She okay. just show me where that is. I guess. Okay. Also, the one austerity policy is going away now. Okay. So, do you want all the? Yeah, let me just do that. Now. Yeah. What was the second thing you wanted? Um, EU law. Okay. Okay. 
and the third thing was what was the Australian matrix going away now? Yeah. Okay. mishandle our entire argument. They say that Spain is taking in 17,000. That's their commitment to the EU. We tell you that they are not following through with their commitment. They've only taken in 4% of the refugees that they've promised to take in. Then they say that they're taking in a 90% increase up to 21,000. Their evidence doesn't say that. It says 21,000 up to 90% increase has arrived on Spain's borders, but we tell you that 90% of them have been deported. They try to end out our evidence. It's a completely different piece of evidence. This is some random thing about EU law. We explain that these refugees are arriving on Spain's borders and they are being deported by the country. They're not being accepted. And then they say that they physically can't get there because of new cooperation between Morocco and Spain. But the IOM explains that as this cooperation has shut down the main routes, other use of other routes has increased, and the number of migrants going from Morocco to Spain has actually tripled. But then he explains that uh, then he says that there's going to be more conservative policy making because they're losing a liberal bloc. You can group all of his turns off of this. First of all, it really doesn't matter if Spain loses a liberal bloc insofar as they're not following through on their commitment to taking refugees in the first place. Just because they're losing Catalonia, maybe they'll go from like four percent of refugees to zero percent of refugees. Either way. They're only accepting a minimal amount. What we tell you is that in either world, Catalonia is going to be pushing to accept refugees because there's strong bipartisan support. So even if conservative sentiment increases within Catalonia, we tell you that even the conservatives, even the conservatives within the 
in the country actually support taking in refugees. That's why 160,000 protesters have gone in Barcelona protesting on the streets for the government to accept more refugees. There is strong bipartisan support and strong public support for taking in refugees. But then on our second contention, Again, they completely they completely misunderstand our argument. He tries to deny any kids by saying that austerity is going away now. The only thing that their evidence is, is that they're like they have this part of the budget in which they're changing it to increase pay for some government workers. This has nothing to do about the austerity measures that we're talking about in terms of social security. Their responses are not responsive at all. But then they go on to the, then on to the second argument. They say that the, the independence is growing and there's more support, but you can respond I'll respond to that on their case. First, you can start on negotiations. Size of GW explains that the Catalan secessionist movement and the Spanish anti-independence movement are not ideologically irreconcilable. That's why Gower of the Brown Political Review, who they cite, explains that the conviction between the Catalan independence movement is now strong enough for all parties to accept the inevitability. They try to say that support for, the support for independence is very, very low, but the only thing that their evidence is that some separatist leaders have, have stopped the push for secession unilaterally. But that what we would tell you is that, the, like Dewan explains, that the, the support for independence is incrementally increasing over time, meaning that if we wait now, this, the probability of independence is just going to be higher later on. But even more of our probability, the Spanish Prime Minister as of two weeks ago has explicitly shut down the possibility of negotiations. They see centers for collaboration have already opened. No, that's not true. They're just saying that some discussions are occurring. More specifically, neither Spain nor Catalonia will make meaningful concessions. First on Spain, because plenty of the Washington Post in 2017 explains it would risk upsetting the delicate battle of battle balance of constitutional powers, which would lead to a, a really bad precedent for the future. But moreover, for all the audience of the Atlantic Sentinel rights, that Spain has been unwilling to negotiate on more autonomy. But then second, on Catalonia, Doniendo of the Atlantic in 2017 explains that dialogue has never actually prevailed. They failed to create long-lasting and beneficial compromise, which is why Balfour explains that every single time negotiations happen, they always end up getting rolled back. So even if you buy the negotiations to help in the short term, they don't stop anything in the long term. Then on trade. They say the international border is going to decrease free trade, but the regional importance of Spanish markets is declining quick, quickly because Castells Video <coughs> or, or Barcelona explains the Catalan exports are rapidly diversifying. But second, it's logically inconsistent because Spain would not want all, want to all of a sudden cut all of its trade, which is the biggest trading partner. They're not going to do that, rather bonafide that they would implement mutually beneficial trade like trade agreements once independence happens. Then they tell you that unemployment is going to double. This is literally a random assertion from the Spanish Ministry of the Economy with no methodology. They have no impact on this argument. But then second on pensions, the Catalan news in 2017 explains that without independence the social safety net system in Catalonia would compl remain completely sustainable. That's why Bosch of the ARA explains that Catalonia can fund their own welfare system because in a potential negotiation with Spain, Catalonia could claim a portion of their social security reserve fund. Ultimately, bad act of the BBC explains that Ca the Catalan parliament has attempted to to mode into existence governmental infrastructure so just its own social security department to prop up a future independent country only to be blocked by Spain. The only reason why it's not sustainable is because of Spain. But then on the impact, the Siroki evidence has absolutely no like application to this context, but we'll talk about that later. Are you in the cross? Uh, yeah. Can we just like stand here? Mm -hmm. Okay. What does Gar conclude is the most likely option? Which Gar? Gar of the Brown Political Review. Well, okay, so Gar discusses like a bunch of different scenarios, but I would say that the way that you read it sort of like well, does, is not like I mean, consistent with what like he's There's a line say. where he says like the most probable outcome is blank. Like what does he say? Right, but what, so you can. What is he saying? He says that the most likely outcome of the conflicts is that reforms and greater autonomy will happen. Okay, so why don't you go to the, the very bottom of it, the last yeah. paragraph, right? Where so what he says, says that after, like, if there, given that there would be an, an, another referendum, which happened, like, after Gower posted that, right. then the most likely, then he would say that it, mo all parties would be able to agree that the Spanish, like, Spanish sentiment and Catalan sentiment are ideologically irreconcilable sure. and independent. On that though, two things. Gar says that two things have to happen for that secession to, like, happen. One, there has to be a fair, like an election that all sides deem as fair, and B, a majority of the population has to support it. No, he so we would say, yeah, there, he, he, he just says, okay, so, so we he would says say that, that there like, would have to be a referendum. Right, which we would say right? Spain probably which wouldn't happened. allow. Right, like Spain's not going to allow another referendum. Like no one is like legitimately looking at the last referendum. So Spain declared it illegal. So Spain evidence, declare... The Dewan evidence indicates that the sentiment, like the sentiment within Catalonia, is just the, the like desire for independence is increasing over time. Sure, but, but Gar sets the right. But yeah, sure. Okay, so let's talk about your Siroki evidence. Yeah. What does what is Siroki studying? Like what kind of secessions? What do you mean? He's studying violent secessions, like states between Serbia and well, Kosovo, no. where one forcibly he's, he's seceded after like ethnic interstate ethnic conflict in several wars, right? Like sure. the study that the countries that he are looking at that he's looking at is like not at all consistent with an agreed secession between Catalonia and Spain. But more importantly, sure. more importantly, he isolates for two factors which he says make the, like make this violent conflict really likely, but in states where those two factors are not there, violent conflict is not likely. What are those two? I have no idea. So he says 
first of all, and most importantly, income levels. So he explains that in, when wealthy countries secede, the chance of violent conflict is 0%, which is really, really important because if Catalonia were to be independent, it would have the 34th largest country the economy in the world, larger than that of South Korea and Italy, meaning that in a world in which Catalonia actually secedes, the Soroki evidence is not applicable That's fine. at all. That's fine. Let's talk about the Brunet evidence. If Catalonia collapses, do you think there would be conflict? No. Why? Like, if there's a state failure. I would say that Catalonia like, is not going to collapse. Right. This is so nonsensical. Like, this is kind of nonsensical, right? Wait, like, why Catalonia is like you dropped subpoint A? Like, Catalonia? just cold, right? What are you, you talking that's about? Really, we read two subpoints. You just go straight to trade. That's really important because the Connolly evidence, or sorry, right, the, wait, the, hold the, on. Are, this wait, is really the important. The responses that I make are responses. Wait, no, because the Murado well. evidence is really important. It literally says that independence right now would inevitably lead to internal violence, dooming the state to failure. Wait, that's literally so just we'll talk about the link level. Wait, Eden, uh, we'll, talk we'll, about we'll, talk about the, we'll talk about the link level okay. later. If Catalonia is a failed state, would there be conflict? It's not going. This like, is the, just absurd. Assume, like, 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 level it's, a, it's a country like Italy or South Korea. If There's Catalonia is a failed, failed state, state, would there I be conflict? I want to talk about your like. That's I want to talk about the assertion. Session inevitable tensions and then extending terms will be as well. Wait, I don't know what that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Secession inevitable what? Secession inevitable uh, tensions and then turns. Okay. Is everybody ready? So there are two possibilities. Either secession is inevitable or it's not. My opponents will have you believe that it is. However, however, uh, she never responded to the Spanish power argument from David's rebuttal that basically says that the free evidence that says that Spain will do everything in its power to prevent secession and that it will be su successful in preventing secession. But here's what's really going to matter in this round. Even if secession is inevitable, we still win. Here's why. She dropped subpoint A. What subpoint A tells you is that the current polarization in Catalonia is going to create conflict if they're granted independence right now. 
my opponents also tell you that support for independence increases over time. So if we're seeing secession down the road, we're seeing an independent Catalonia with a more homogenous public opinion about independence, which means that we're not triggering our first sub point. Now let's talk about pensions. So she, she, mostly, responded, she mostly responded to trade, um, but okay. So, so let's talk about pensions. She dropped our debt card, which is Lacal. She only responded to trade, or she ignored her other link into pensions, which is debt. Lacal tells you that if Catalonia were to become an independent nation, it would have to take on that massive amount of debt. The government would not be able to have enough tax revenue to fund pensions. That's a narrative, that's a link chain that she never addresses, so that's a very, very clean impact for us. Here's why that matters. Saavedra tells you that the pension system isn't going to recover until 2088, at which point we can access our Guillain evidence that tells you that's a 75% increase in poverty. Um, and our GAR evidence that an, an increase in poverty also leads to a failed state, which in turn leads to more conflict. And what our STAR evidence tells you is that state failure increases the chance of war by 45% and increases the chance of international conflict by 115%. Now moving on to David's rebuttal. The first thing I want you, you would extend is the Dina's turn on immigration. They say all of a sudden Catalonia is going to accept a, va a massive number of ref refugees, a massive number of immigrants. What we're going to see with that is we're going to see an increase in nationalism and an increase in nationalist hard right policies. And they t they spend their entire second contention telling you why that's such a bad thing. So that turns their whole second contention against them. That's Queen Gay. Okay. So off time, it's going to start on their sub point A, then pensions, and then uh, our first attention. Uh, yeah. Okay. Start on the idea of their sub point A. In her summary, she literally says that over time, the independence movement is going to get so strong that everybody in Catalonia will agree that it's inevitable, which means that they don't trigger their sub point A, don't vote here. Now on our, so their second sub point, their second impact about pensions. They drop the Bosch of ARA card, which explains that Catalonia can fund their own social welfare programs because A, it could just use their treasury, which is already so rich right now, but secondly, they would negotiate with Spain to not literally just give up all of their money and to give up all their debt to Spain. This is literally absurd, right? Spain is the biggest trading partner with Catalonia. It's not going to just let it go up in smoke once it becomes independent, especially if it's granting its independence, which would happen if if you affirm now it's on our idea of uh, now on our idea of refugees the only response that they have left at this argument is about this idea of nationalism. But they don't answer the evidence that Eden reads, which is in our case, which says from first, that there's a wide support for refugees in Catalonia right now, meaning if it's its own country, there's not gonna be rapid increases in nationalism against them. 160,000 people last month protested to increase refugees. But also, the people in parliament right now are actually passing re uh, resolutions to increase the number of, uh, uh, of refugees substantially more than Spain. Meaning that there's not going to be this increase in like conservative policies against refugees, even if you let them in. But even if you think that these terms are true and that they win them, we would say that this is not important at all. Because even if there's some anti-refugee policy in the future, that's a lot better than allowing 15,000 people to die on the border, right? Because we say those people are trying to get into Spain right now. The only people blocking them is the Spanish government. If you allow for independence, Catalonia has already passed re resolutions that would allow them in. Here's why this is important. Because we say from Barubicus that they can house 15,000 refugees right now and that the refugees that are coming into Spain are being deported illegally. There's no contestant after after Adam's rebuttal. Here's why we outweigh. First, on clarity of impact. We know as soon as you affirm that they're going to allow refugees and those 15,000 lives are going to be saved, we don't know if there's going to be a Spanish civil war in the future just because somebody doesn't get their pensions. But moreover, we would say that it's a lot more important than their economic impacts because economic economies can fluctuate and increase. We would say that like losing a life is a lot more important than losing some drops in GDP and maybe some pensions. So we can both agree that Catalonia is pretty polarized right now over independence. But, yeah, but I, then you conceded in summary that no, no, over no. time they're going to be more Okay, I said there are there two are. possibilities. That's one of them. Let's look at what happens to that. But and right now, you said that there's not no, a can I explain this, please? Okay, so 
Yeah, okay, sure. So I think or, or not. Well, you asked the question. Sure. We want to answer. Why? I, so just just to clarify, we're agreeing right now. Catalonia is very polarized over the issue. No. No. I think. Wait, you. Okay. I'm confused. I think you agreed to that just, earlier. No, that's not what we said. I think that there's a very big extrapolation that you're making mm -hmm. in your case that makes your argument not true. Okay. So even if we buy all of your like studies with tiny sample sizes that says that say that like the vast majority of Catalans. Um, support negotiations. It mm -hmm. doesn't say that they don't support independence. Well, it actually, it does. It, that's no, a 20, it that's a twenty-seven percent. Wait, no, I want to. I want to clarify. The government card Wait, can, I, can I please? <coughs> things. So, what the evidence says is that those people, like, first of all, they're setting a scenario of unilateral secession. Right? Wait, it means, yeah. it means like, like, oh, we're a country now. Okay, you're, not you're totally ignoring our twenty-seven percent card here. That's just. But, but what's like, really no, that's important the same here, type of poll. It's, it's either no, really negotiations or unilateral secession. Look, I think this argument's been overlooked throughout the round. What we're seeing is we're seeing people protesting on both sides in Catalonia. There's clear conflict. It's very clear that both people have strong opinions. What you're saying is that those opinions are going to become homogenous over time. Over time, there's not going to be conflict of it. So what we're seeing is that even if, even if we buy that secession is inevitable, secession in our world is much better than independence in yours because in yours we're seeing this disagreement and this conflict wait, and this no, violence. No, wait. The resolution doesn't specify like a time frame. Wait, that's the point. Wait, wait, wait you're saying independence happens in five years? Forget it, forget it, forget it. Can I try explaining it? Because I think this is really important. We just the try to explain it for 30 seconds. Is he did? I, I okay, did. Let me, let me try. <laughs> well, and you're okay. a cheat. You're a team. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Confirm the resolution right now. Sure. Gunterman says that it's so polarized that there's going to be a state collapse. What Izzy says in summary is that the only scenario in which secession happens is a scenario in which so many people support secession that it doesn't trigger the link into state collapse. But that secession? means, wait, that means, this is really important, that means that if the secession is inevitable and it happens in a world where everybody supports it, that's an okay thing for secession? our world. But secession? when you artificially create it by affirming the resolution, what Murado tells you when you guys never wait, respond wait, 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 to is that Catalonia literally collapses immediately. Okay, so, all right. So the, I think the, the like, the, cognitive dissonance that's coming out of your contention is because you think that secession, unilateral secession, means being granted independence, no, I understand. which no, does not, not is not what that means at all. That's, no, it's like none of that's the evidence in sub A is saying. dependent on, uni it's not about like velvet divorce okay. versus unilateral secession. Like, the idea is that right now, if Catalonia were to be independent, what Murado says it would face so much internal discord that it necessarily collapses right now. Sure. That gets Maybe solved back for in a world where your C2 right. warrant so, to happen. So, they, so, so the impact, impact so like, there's impact literally no offense. It's violence and failed state, which you never respond to. Yeah, and that's like the end of cross, or yeah. Uh, it's going to be inevitability, subpoint A, state collapse with some like refugee weighing, and then like specific responses like on refugees. Is everybody ready? Cool. Secession is not inevitable. They never respond to the RT evidence that says that there's literally no capacity. Intent doesn't matter if they physically can't concede or secede. There's no like materialization of any of their impacts. What that means is that A, it shows that Catalonian, the Catalonian people won't pursue secession because they know it'll fail, but even if they do, what RT finds is that Spain will be able to prevent it. Then on subpoint A, you're voting here really cleanly. There's massive polarization right now. Gunterman tells you that only 27% of people in Catalonia strongly support independence. What Izzy and I would say is that if you affirm the resolution, that only decreases. Because as economic turmoil happens in, the, in their world, that support goes down. That's really important. You, you star this card. You vote on Murado. He says that state collapse happens immediately. This outweighs on probability because it's a guarantee when you affirm the state collapses. But if the state collapses, that's probably going to create a whole lot of refugees. So if you want to vote on refugees, you vote there and if the state collapses they'll be so busy focusing on internal affairs they won't be able to accept the refugees and if they do it still won't help them then you extend gar who said from the brown political review which basically says that the uh that uh, there would be so much political instability and turmoil that the state would collapse. That political instability also prevents the acceptance of refugees. Ultimately, you vote on stars. Says that if the state collapse happens, there's a 45% increase in the probability of civil war. 
Then on the refugees argument, they never actually show you that there's a difference between life and death. They never once showed you like that how many refugees are dying daily. All they read you is one like rhetoric card that says that it can mean the difference between life and death. Don't let them get up here and just weigh 15,000 lives against our argument. Like I'm pretty sure like one refugee, like, like they know they never show you a quantification that there's no way to weigh it in the round. And if anything, you vote for us on the brist turn here. They never like like Chris just says don't vote on it, but that doesn't that, or the, the Dina's turn. That doesn't make any sense. Dina's literally says that if you affirm the resolution and you change from gradual refugee policies to immediate refugee policies on net you see both an immediate and a long-term reaction that's a counterbalance in policy support that means that a like not only does that function as terminal defense on the refugees uh, argument but it's also a place to vote for us because if on net the support for refugees goes down in the long term you're seeing less refugees let in at the end of the day you vote for us because when you affirm you guarantee a state collapse in war when you vote for them if secession does happen it's happening in a world where it doesn't trigger state collapse that's not a reason not to vote for us we have 40 seconds every single piece of evidence that they read on the fragmentation argument. They say that only 27% of Catalans actually strongly support independence. We would explain that, for one, they never actually tell you how many of them outright oppose independence. But moreover, these polls are looking to a, a scenario in which Catalonia independently secedes unilaterally without Spanish support. This is not what the resolution is asking. This resolution is asking if Catalonia should secede with Spain's blessings. Of course, in a scenario in which they are being asked if they should secede against their parent country, in which their economy could possibly be collapsed by the parent country, then they would say no. But we would say that in a situation in which it is granted and all these trade agreements remain intact, then of course they would oppose, they would, they would of course support, support it. But then moreover, they just say the negotiations are preferred over unilater unilaterally like seceding. But we would say that we, they concede our response is that these negotiations are failing in the status quo. But this means that the vast majority of support, like the vast majority of Catalan people support negotiating for more autonomy or some sort of independence. We say that they have no internal leak on this argument. But even if you buy it, the probability of state collapse is incredibly low just because a couple of people are a kind of mad that their government made the decisions that they don't like. It doesn't mean they're somehow going to revolt. They never give you a warrant. They never give you a reason as to, as to why this would happen. But more importantly, on refugees. They say that economy is a prerequisite, but my responses on the economy go completely conceded so they don't win this. But then they say that, then they say that support for refugees would decrease. But we say that there's bipartisan support in Catalonia for refugees. That comes from Nichols. So it doesn't matter if conservative sentiment increases because the conservatives support refugees too. We would say from Al Monitor, the public services and infrastructure are in Catalonia to house these refugees. That's why we can already house 15,000 of them. This is critical. We outweigh on probability because we tell you that resettlement is the difference between life and death, but we have no idea if this blippy argument on state collapse is actually going to happen. We say that the vast majority of Catalan people actually do support, actually like do support independence, and their studies only look at a scenario with the, in which unilaterally seceding, which of course would be a bad idea. But given that it's like they would have Spain's blessings in the affirmative world, we would say that the, like they, they would obviously like support independence in our world. This means that they have no warrant and they have no link into their impacts. But then moreover, we would say that in, in their world, these refugees are like we would say that these refugees are either going into a into a shelter or into a 